so uh, let's discuss a question and uh, this particular question deals with uh, employment income and we have uh, a bit of partnership as well as uh, a bit of uh, property income too so let's discuss the question first martin is employed by global plc and is also a member of a partnership the following information is available in the respect of tax year 19 and 20 and the data pertaining to employment so we need to uh, have the rules of employment income during the tax year martin was paid a gross annual salary of 144000 in respect of his employment with global plc so first of all uh, let's take the salary always take the gross salary if there is a net salary given then you have to use gross salary in the pro forma salary is always gross amount now in addition to salary paid martin was paid the following bonuses by global plc now as far as the bonus rule is concerned uh, we have to check the date of entitlement and the date of receipt and the rule is that whichever is earlier so as per the date of receipt and the date of entitlement we will see that the uh, earlier value will fall in which tax year and we will choose it accordingly. So if you see that the amount is 18,200 and the date of payment and date of entitlement. So the earlier date is date of entitlement. So it says that the date is uh, 18 and 19 and we are working for 19 and 20. So in this year, this is irrelevant. Now the, again, the second one, when we see that 31st August, 2019, and the date of entitlement is 20th September 2019. Both the dates fall in 1920. So this is relevant for this particular year. But as far as the next one is concerned, the date of payment is 2021, but the entitlement is 1920. So this also falls in 19 and 20. So combined together, we have bonus income in 1920 combined together 21,400 plus 13,700 and this is 35,100. Now, during the third point, during the tax year 1920, the global PLC provided Martin with the following petrol powered motor cars. Now let's discuss the rule of car. We need a, a appropriate percentage based on CO2 as well as the list price. But in this case, we have been provided two cars and CO2. So first car, the period covered by the car is 6 April to 31st December and the price is given and the CO2 is given. Similarly, the next car, the price and the CO2. So we need to work out the car benefit for the first car and the car benefit for the second car. So the car benefit is list price 18450 and on the basis of 25 gram, the, there is a minimum rate uh, and it's a petrol powered car. So the minimum rate is 16%, but time apportionment is needed from April to December. So this is nine by 12. So in this way, the calculated value is 2214. Now the second car, we used it from 1st January to 5th April, that is for three months. So again, the car benefit for the second car. And uh, this is uh, 24905. Now the CO2 is more than 50 gram. So the rate you can see in the sheet, in the tax rates and allowances. So 1183. So in this way, up till now, I have covered marks for salary, bonus, and the car rules. So if you remember the rules exactly, you can get the marks easily. Now moving forward, with car, Martin was not provided with any fuel. If fuel was given in the question that you have to use the base value plus the appropriate percentage. Now, point number four, on 6th April 2000. 19 global plc provided martin with an interest free loan of 8000 which he used to purchase a motorbike no loan repayment were made during the year now 
this particular point relates with the beneficial loan. So what is the rule of beneficial loan? If the interest rate is less than official rate of interest, that is 2.5%, then we have to cal calculate the uh, taxable benefit. But there is an exception that if the loan is a small one, and in this way, see that the small one, less than 10,000. So this loan is classified as a small one. So you can see that it's a beneficial loan, but falls in the category of exempt benefit. So I have written zero. If the amount will be more than 10,000, then we have to calculate the beneficial loan interest using either average method or accurate method. The next point says that throughout the tax year, Global PLC allowed Martin private use of a home entertainment system owned by the company. The system cost company 7,400 on 6th April 2009. So at the start of the year, the Martin was provided with a home entertainment system. So you have to apply the rule of use of assets. The rule of use of assets. It says that whatever asset has been provided in this case, the home entertainment system, the tax applicable tax taxable benefit is 20% of the cost and the cost is 7,400. So the taxable benefit is 1480. Next point says that during tax year, Martin donated a total of 1000 gross to charity under the payroll deduction scheme operated by Global PLC. So as this is a payroll deduction scheme, so it's a deductible expense. So payroll deduction scheme, we have to reduce the employment income from the amount of payroll deduction scheme and that has been given as 1000. Similarly, Martin paid an annual professional subscription of 560, which is relevant for his employment with Global PLC, and also paid an annual membership fee of 1240 to a health club, which he used to entertain the client. Global PLC did not reimburse any of these costs. So that means it's a deductible expense, but you know that professional fee is a deductible expense, while the other thing is not a deductible expense. So professional subscription, professional subscription is 560. And as far as the health club membership is concerned, that health club membership, you have to write zero against it. So these are the employment benefits from point number one till point number three, till point number seven. So. The total we can calculate is 182417. So this is our employment income. This is employment income. Now let's work out the other information. So now let's deal with partnership. Martin has been in partnership with Norma and Opera since 1st January 2007. So it's an ongoing partnership and the trading profit for the year ended December 19 was 54,600. Until 30th September 2019, that is the part of the year, profit was shared in this ratio. Since 1st October, profit have been shared equally. So this is a change in profit and loss ratio. So I need to work out the detail. So let's work out the partnership profit. So I have to calculate my share that is the Martin's share. So you can see up to 30th September, up to 30th September 19, the profit was 54,600 and time apportionment, apportionment is needed and then allocate the share of Martin and that share of Martin is Martin share is 
So 40% profit is attributable to Martin, that is 16380. And then up to 31st December 19, the profit multiply by 3 by 12, multiply by now equal sharing and the profit becomes 4550. So total is 20930 that Martin has earned as a sole trader. So it becomes a trading income. So trading profit, share of trading profit. This is working number one and this is uh, belongs to Martin that is 20930. Now there is some property income as well. So although uh, I haven't covered property income yet, but let me just give you an idea for this property income. So during the tax year, during the tax year, Martin rented out one furnished room of his main residence, receiving rent of 9,200 for the year. So this rule is pertaining to the rental income or the rental business. Now, the rent received from this business is 9,200 and no additional expenditure was incurred as a result of this letting. So when we calculate the rent from, uh, from a room, then there is a rule called rent a room relief. And what is that rule? This rule says that take your rental income so our rental income is 9200 now you have option that is either you can deduct your genuine expense or rent a room relief and that relief is 7500 so either you can use your own expense if there is any or you can use the amount of relief against the expense so in this case the rental income becomes 1700. So this is also non-saving income. So this is property income and that property income is 1700. Now another information says that is also received dividend. So also dividend income that is 440. On 30th November, Martin received interest of 1330 on the maturity of saving certificate from National Saving and Investment Investment. So as its interest from NSNI and it's an exempt income, interest from National Saving and Investment Certificates and this is considered to be an exempt income. So in this way, my total income becomes 205. 487. This is my total income, and we can also say that this is my net income. So, what I have to calculate, I'm not uh, considering this self assessment portion because we haven't discussed this in our classes. So, moving on, requirement calculate Martin's taxable income for the tax year 19 and 20. You should indicate by the use of zero any item which are not taxable or deductible. So Taxable income, in order to calculate taxable income, you have to identify personal loans. Now see, the income is beyond 100,000, it's beyond 1,25,000. So personal allowance is clearly zero and your taxable income is 205487. Now, the basic rate band is up to 37,500. The second band is up to 150,000. It means this particular income is uh, to be taxed as non saving income. This is non saving income. This is non saving income. This is non saving income. And dividend will be covered under NRB. So you have to calculate uh, on non, uh, non saving income mainly as a rate, at a rate of 20, then 40, then 45 percentage. Now let's just move to another question.